Okay, this video is Ivy Geography, Power Places and Networks, Our Shrinking World and the Forces Driving Technological Innovation. So the subtopics are changing, global data flows and pattern oh patterns and what patterns and trends, transport developments over time, um, patterns and trends in communication infrastructure and use. So changing global data flow patterns and trends. So in the 1800s, submarine telephone cables made of copper linked um, continents together for communications, data flows, more growth of mobile internet in newly industrialized countries and low income countries until 2015, um, like quite significantly. And obviously it's still rising, but that was just a significant time period. Um, biggest rise will be smartphones and that can be used for healthcare and education too and LICs um, providing like databases and information networks. Some inconsist inconsistencies exist in elderly, rural areas and disabled people in terms of um, access to technologies and use of technologies. Digitization um, in the 21st century, flows of data um, allows for a falling cost of cross-border communications and transactions. It mainly has occurred throughout Europe, US and Singapore, um, like high income countries. Half of the world's traded services are digitized and instantaneous, such as Netflix and things like Amazon. Um, trade used to be dominated by physical goods and services for TNCs and HICs, but now it's much more services and data information um, types of flows. Okay, so this is a graph showing cross-border bandwidth and it has grown 45 times larger over the past decade and might grow another 9 times larger by this year. Um, so obviously huge growth in this idea of data flows. Okay, now transport developments over time. So distance decay is areas, the idea where areas that are close together are more likely to interact with one another and this is a decrease due to transport and technological improvements that mean that with more like efficient transport like this thing of distance decay isn't as relevant friction of distance is the reduced likelihood of people using a service the greater that they live from it and it's an issue due to time and cost of coming again this is being overcome because of technological transport developments so this is kind of a general trend so in the 19th century there was low speed of transport high cost of overcoming distance decay slow and difficult movement over land until steam power existed iron and steel trains existed railway tracks and ocean going vessels were the main like sources of large transport and then in the 20th century commercial jet aircraft was used by tnc's as well as people large super freighter freighter um and ocean going vessels were used and containerization was used not all goods um have been causally affected however tnc's are more likely to employ new machinery satellite technology further developed through communications by collecting transforming and transmitting information that's also been the large prolifer uh, not proliferation like i guess spread of the use of optic fibers so these are the different types of transports and we'll discuss how they've each developed so rail Railways, so in the Industrial Revolution, um, they developed largely because of the, you know, steam engines and without this, the British Empire would not have had so much political influence. There's also been the Orient Express from Paris to Istanbul, but that was mainly for the rich. Now in Shanghai, Japan, there are bullet trains and there are much, there are railways at much lower cost essentially nowadays, instead of only the rich being able to use them. Air, so the first powered and controlled flight was conducted in 1902 by the Wright brothers and now there are non-stop around the world flights by solar and battery powered airplanes um, as of 2000. Airbus released the A380 double-decker civilian passenger jet and that made it much cheaper to fly and increased trade and tourism as well. Um, maritime transport, so from the 1750s to 1800s, hundreds, the main shipping routes were between South Africa, the UK, North America. Um, Oh, wait, South Africa and UK and North America and UK and there was containerization due to Keith Tang Liner in the 1930s and Malcolm McLean in 1956 that allowed for world trade increasing by 20 fold and more trade liberalization it's also been the establishment of the Suez and Panama canals very important for global trade through sea routes then finally have roads so in 3000 BC there were the first paved roads in 300 BC 
first major road system was established by the Romans, and the Silk Road um, from Europe to Asia. Um, and that was the first pan-continental trade route. Creation of modern states in the 17th century allowed for more established road systems, and in the 20th century there was the built construction of the American Interstate Highway, huge highway, I think it's like 60 kilometers or something just like, it basically goes across America. And there also was the creation of waterproof surfaces to make travel more easy, again reducing the idea of distance decay and friction of distance. Okay, then we have patterns and trends in communication infrastructure and use. So communication infrastructure is the physical backbone of the communication system of which various broadcasting telecommunications internet internet-based services are operated. In this network of hardware devices, they are linked by cable or wireless systems allowing flows of data to be transformed between them, usually in digital form. A black hole is a location where incoming or outgoing data are dropped from the network without informing the sender or recipient that this has happened. Um, this has happened. And it's often temporary and caused by system failure and detected by a lack of flows across their boundaries. And it can also be intentional due to political um just political like um intentions or political interests to protect data or to, you know, prohibit the sharing of data and things like that. Digital divide um, gap between demographics and regions with access to modern information and those without access, so or if they're in restricted areas. The read-only web is most of the time where web pages simply presented pages with options to download and purchase. Read-write web was from 1997 onwards where there's much greater user interaction and that became possible. Over-the-top players are, the, are players that offer direct apps and streaming content. Okay, so now we'll look at the global trends in terms of communication infrastructure and use. So the largest increases in data flows between US and Middle East. Um, that's like largest increase. Okay, so the largest increase in data flows have been between US and the Middle East. It could be political or it could be due to oil trade. And it's expected to increase between Europe and the US due to their political ties, Western collaboration and similar digital companies. Um, like service providers and things and like technologies like the brands are quite similar so there's more t like chance for integration and also it meant it is said to increase in HICs because of more access to technology there um, but obviously a lot of developing countries are also gaining their access to um, data flows and everything so in 2005 there were 4.7 terabytes per second um, sent globally. Fastest was between North America and Europe, lowest was between North America and South America slash Asia. 2014, the flows were 45 times faster um, with 211.3 terabytes per second. Um, there are more data flows between North America and Africa, Africa and Oceania, Africa and Middle East, Oceania was more integrated um, in terms of like all the islands around and it was more integrated with the globe in general. And the, I think the highest speed was 20,000 gigabytes per second. Um, and also Facebook has more users than the population of China. And LICs gain internet use through social media. And email has become faster and more accessible. So social media and email do play a large role in this trend of global data sharing as well.